Hello, my name is Jason Sinwell. I'm going to talk about a package on CRAN called RegBed, uh, which is short for the regularized mediation. Um, I'm going to talk about the analysis of that with a couple examples. Um, here's a rough outline, which isn't anything fancy, just talking about the background of regularized mediation. I'll talk a little bit about um, structured equation modeling um, at the RegMed method. Um, and then extension, uh, the basic regmade method and extension to most variant, and then just some concluding thoughts. A um, little background on myself. I am uh, I work at the Mayo Clinic as a biostatistician. Um, been there about 20 years since I graduated from Iowa State University in 2002. Share screen there. Um, my main research areas are in cancer genomics. Um, specifically, I've worked in GWAS, um, DNA, RNA sequencing over the years, and I'm a package co author on the packages listed. Um, most of, all of them are uh, collaborations with one or more other people, so um, definitely not my own work with those. Okay, a little background on regularized mediation. Um, most of this talk is from two different papers that were published in the last couple of years. The first one, um, both with Dan Shade, who I worked with for a while. Um, the first one was introducing a different way to do this analysis. It's not a totally new analysis, but um, it's with mediation with lots of biomarkers, especially in my area, cancer genomics. It makes sense to uh, try and put some structure um, with some penalized models for these medi mediators, which can be, in, in my motivating example, their biomarkers um, between exposure and an outcome. Um, and then the 2021 paper is an extension to multivariate data. And these are, if this, if these slides become available, these are all active links, um, uh, which you can see. And then I just put a link to the, the RegMed package on Koran where there's a vignette, which covers actually a lot of these examples, but I try and give a few more details in this in this uh, seminar. Um, OK, so mediation, motivating experience, experiments. So you we all know there are exposure variables, which I'll call X in most of in most of this talk, and that those can have an effect on an outcome. Um, most of the examples that this works with are continuous outcomes, but you can take residuals from a logistic logistic regression, make it work that way if you need to, or from a survival model. The variability in the outcome can be explained by one or more biomarkers. Those would be called, I'll call mediators um, for most of the purposes here, um, but those mediators, biomarkers, are not independent of this exposure variable, so you have to account for that um, indirect association. So um, these kind of models impose that linked association between the the exposure and the biomarker, um, so two different levels there, and or one level there, and then the second level being the biomarker and the outcome. But also we want to allow um, for association between the exposure itself and the outcome. So just to put this in graphical terms, I've got two different examples. Um, these are not overlapping, these are side by side. Um, the first example is kind of how we do regular linear regression with multiple variables. You, you can't really deconvolute um, a, any effect between the X and the media, the exposure, the blue one and the mediators, but um, they all might have an effect on the outcome. But on the right, where we um, pardon that I can't really control <laughs> how the structure works, but um, I thought it's a good example that we can you take advantage of the R plotting of graphs where you can see that we um, in structural equation modeling and in, I guess in mediation, we allow links between the exposure and mediators and the mediators to be um, linked to the outcome. So that's the kind of models we're trying to set up. So just to put this into formula terms, so exposure is associated with mediators, so we model an alpha for that, um, any of those mediators, eyes, or any number of exposure um, sub I. Um, so that has to be, we in uh, mediation, that has to be non-zero. Al some alpha has to be non-zero. And for that same mediator, it would also, the beta between the mediator and the Y would have to be non-zero as well for it to be a true mediator. But in that second equation, um, a search for the outcome, you would also allow the exposure variable with the delta parameter to be um, linked and associated with the outcome. 
So as I was saying, for a mediator to be truly a mediator, you'd need both the alpha and the beta in that in those two equations to be non-zero. And you can do a formal test where you do like alpha times beta. This is classical in, in the literature. That's kind of what's done is um, multiply alpha times beta, do it, and then see if that's different than zero. And you can do that over a group of mediators where you can sum that. Um, but what what are the RegMed package is trying to deal with is what, what, what happens when you have a lot of mediators? Um, can you filter them? So there's some work by uh, originally by Sobel and then more recently by Fan and Liv in 2008 for just pre-filter by um, covariances of those two different levels between the X and the mediators and the mediators and Y. Or um, what we've offered in RegMed is a penalized approach. So we... <clears throat> How do we set this up? So we have structured equations modeling, um, and we allow direct, direct relationships from exposure to mediators and also exposure to the outcome, and allow correlation among the mediators and um, some some other metrics that um, are considered in this framework are a CFI, um, where higher is better, um, a root mean square error of approximation, lower is better for that. And what we do in RegMed is uh, BICs. So we do um, uh, log likelihood, and then we add penalties for all these different parameters. And in that, in in obviously in log likelihood, lower is better. So, and obviously um, if it performs better with the penalties involved. So let's talk about what we do in the RegMed package. Um, so, um, but I just first want to note that if you do, if you're looking for uh, latent variables where you're having groupings of mediators, that's more for just the Levon package, which we talk about a little bit here. But um, so just use structural equation modeling with that. The BregMed is not talking about latent variables or is not aimed at finding latent variables for those mediator or for the intermediate terms. BregMed uses structural equation modeling to select um, from mediators for a best model with the with these best um, penalties for the model. So um, a similar package is called RegSem, um, but um, RegMed has been compared to it where it's improved on speed, uh, different penalty options, and convergence. And like I said, we take advantage of the log likelihood um, and use a beige information criteria, the BIC. So. Um, so what we do for penalties is a combination of L1 and L2 penalty, um, the L1 being um, termed lasso and um, the L2 penalty being a ridge-based penalty. So um, the sparse group lasso, pen lasso penalty used in Regmid has a lambda that penalizes all these different terms. So outside of this is the log likelihood. This is the penalty on the actual coefficients that I'm simplifying and singling out here. So a lambda is we apply that penalty to everything um, and this W is a penalty on the delta, which is the direct effect between X and Y itself, exposure and Y. And then we have two different terms here, um, a weighting between, and so F is kind of a fraction of what weight gets applied to the lasso and the, and the ridge L2. So the lasso being on the right here, um, where we have a, um, a penalty on the absolute value of the alpha, alpha plus the beta, and then the L2, the ridge penalty being a, a penalty on the square square term of those, but we're adding them instead of multiplying, which is what we talked about in previous um, slide there where we multiplied. So an F is a fraction of that penalty, like I talked about, and I already talked about the weights and the delta. W weights how much to penalize um, delta in addition to the lambda that's already that's still applied to there. So we have a a simple example that we take advantage of with data I prefer, that we simulated and put in the uh, RegMed package just called MedSim. Um, X has 10 uh, exposures with, a, this is 100 subjects and 200 mediators. So um, we just choose the first X for simplicity here and we're going to try and pre-filter the mediators. So we're going to try and the, the analysis steps are to pre-filter and then find the best lambda penalty to apply where we get the best BIC um, and apply that fit, select the final model. Um, that sounds like the same thing, but it's not. I'll show you why. And then fit a final model without the penalties. 
So this simple example, first we we just have an X, a first the first X from that matrix of X's and the first there's actually two Y's, but we just do the first Y and then give it all the meters and I'm going to tell it to pick um, just seven for this example and they still run off my screen. <laughs> Sorry about that, um, but it does pick seven mediators and they're just simply named so it doesn't distract <laughs> where we all be like, oh, I like that mediator if we had a real example, but um, so then um, with those pre-filtered seven mediators, um, I put them all in a matrix or a data set called X1. Um, or yeah, X1, I set X1, Y1, and then mediators pass those to a, a regmed.grid, which is running, um, trying to find the best lambda penalty. So I give it a range of lambdas, one to zero, and to, um, differ by negative 0.33 and then a fraction of that lasso and the weight of delta are specified as below um, and then it does give some log messages and then here is the BIC so we choose we would you don't have to choose the lowest you can try and interpolate between where those lambda penalties are um, like I the lowest BIC here seems to be the 803 so and then they all converged different number of iterations um, so here is I did a actual fit with the best best lambda. I just chose 0.3, and we see that the, I I just condensed this to a uh, two column matrix of the alpha penalties or alpha coefficients. These are penalized still, so they're lower than what they would be estimated otherwise. Um, and so we see a lot are non-zero for the alphas, with this association between the, the coefficient between the x and the mediators, and then only two that are non-zero between the the mediators and uh, why? Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but notice that um, not all these are that big, so I can filter those further. So what I actually do, we actually have a function called regmed edges where I take that fit and I looks like I've used a different one when I was going through this, but it, it does the same thing. Um, lamb four. So sorry about that. That was lamb three with lambda v3 so i'm i fit the wrong one there but it it does the same thing i was just tinkering with those as i was developing the presentation but the epsilon that's the lowest value that i'm going to allow the alpha or the beta to be absolute value um so if i use the epsilon at 0 0.01 i'm only going to actually have one true mediator i'm not i'm not going to have mediator 99 i'm going to have mediator one if i say i want to only show mediator so this is where the plot shows that i only have that mediator one but you might think of a scenario where you want more to want to show anything that had that met that alpha or that that um, epsilon of 0 0.01. So I want to keep more of the exposure um, association between exposure and mediators. So I might do um, a, a different option called any kind of association or any kind of um, correlation that it's picking up. So this would show all the the extra relationships that it did estimate between the X and the mediators. And then we still have that one between the exposure mediator and the outcome. So then um, reminder that the regmed is penalized. So what what we offer is a way to fit Levon where we pull out what's necessary from regmed and then fit Levon with it. Um, and then this is a, a quick output of what you'd see from unpanelized estimates of those coefficients between all those different um, terms. Now we do um, the 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 last row is I think <clears throat> roughly what you'd have. I don't understand Levon that well, so I'm not gonna um, overinterpret too much. But I think that's like the uh, baseline effect. All right, so multivariate extension. This is, uh, I don't have much time, so I'm just trying to go a little quickly. Um, so not as like singular exposure. So note that our example had multiple exposures and an another outcome. I'm just going to still keep with one outcome. I'm going to give it more exposures. And this is just with a different grid of lambda penalties um, results or the, the code I'm hiding a little bit, but um, it doesn't choose too many. Um, mediators so i'm just gonna give it a i think a lambda of 0.1 here and keep, even though it wasn't the absolute best somewhere up here between these two lambda 0.25 or 0.3 might be the best um but i want to show more of the mediators so just as this example so i'm it's called mv regmet regmed 
that fit. So I'm going to fit that with the Lambda 0.1s because I want to see a, a few more of those mediators. So allow less of a penalty. Um, and then I'm going to fit, choose the edges with an epsilon of 0 0.05. And so a little different output here. I'm just saying what kind of vertices or what kind of coefficients were kept. So I have multiple mediators, X1, X2, and I have multiple, and X5 actually. And I find different mixes of alphas and deltas that were kept by that criterion. So here's an example of the graph that would be returned by that. It does get a little complex, and I'm trying not to have these mediators be too distracting. So it just, you see like different mediators, different X's, and a lot have um, association with the outcome in this example. So here's a, <clears throat> a, a real world example that was published in the MV RegMed extension. Um, lots of SNPs are associated with um, different heart disease outcomes. Um, so, but other biomarkers as well, LDL, LHDL, and a couple other things. So that we group SNPs by region, and then we put them in, so those aren't necessarily continuous, so, but it does work as long as you have good sample size um, to put those into a multivariate um, mediation framework. So how do those SNPs and biomarkers play a role in either endpoint? And then we've, I'm just gonna show <laughs> what it looks like and you can see um, a lot of complex relationships to untangle but it but without doing this you'd have I mean the research questions are like hey we there's really we don't know how to untangle this so now you can apply this is what the the methods telling us with different penalties um, and telling us that this um, there, these kind of associations are going on with uh, the outcome the red and the different biomarkers and you can switch up mediations and exposures as well, um, depending on how that framework goes, but you're left to interpret it to yourself. So um, some quick conclusions. Um, note that uh, the, the experiments don't have to fit perfectly, but this, um, the mediators can help make sense of the, the causal relationship that might be going on. Um, different alphas, betas, I noted that, don't always have to have both. Um, which since we allow more flexibility, um, you can do other kind of quantitative variables or use residuals from something else. Um, the graphs were useful. And then a final model fit with the Levon. Um, sample size limitations, um, not much time to talk about it. Maybe in question and answer session, please let me know your questions in the question and answer session. Thank you.